Howdy, you know what time it is? Bacon time. It's time to talk about a show that acts like a hostile government takeover. Peppa Pig. So in order to celebrate this inescapable horror, let's talk about the six earth-shatteringly appalling Peppa Pig episodes. Number six, caves. Okay, I admit, I was wrong. It turns out that even living in a cave won't get you away from this confounded ham and rye. For Peppa Pig will just come visit you in said cave. You see, today, Pepper and his family are exploring caves. If, you know, the title didn't give it away. This isn't like your typical guided cave tour, though. We get to see Pepper's family explore a dangerous cave, guided by the ever-insane Grandpa Rabbit, who I actually kind of like as a character. He's probably the best voice performance I've seen in this whole show. Like, he is just loving the role of being the insane old man. Let's go on a wild, mad adventure! However, it turns out, Mummy and Daddy Pig don't like caves. I'm not too keen on small, dark spaces. Uh, like a cave, you mean? Bringing into question why these overgrown pork rinds brought their four-year-old children to a cave. But if this dangerous cave exploration wasn't enough, there's also the Ride of Doom. Ha 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 ha, more on that later. First, our walking rasher portions venture 100 meters down into the cave. Imagine, if you will, the tons and tons of rock just sitting above our heads. I love this guy. Finally, they reach the end of the tunnel and are led to a dark chasm. It's wonderfully deep. But I'm afraid we'll be having no bacon pancakes today. You see, they finally reached the Ride of Doom, which is a zip line that rockets down the cave at terminal velocity. What could possibly go wrong? Our ever sensible buddy Daddy Pig is concerned about heights and asks for another way down. So instead, he's kicked off the cliff. Jeez, this poor guy can just never get a break. Honestly, there's not much to make fun of safety-wise here. The kids explore the caves with trained adults, and only the adults are made to feel uncomfortable. Honestly, I just wanted to explore this episode with you. I think it looks neat. I can't say I enjoyed that. Anyway, let's venture out of the cave and on to the next. And for number five... Super Potato. Peppa Pig is doing an episode about superheroes? How could they make this boring? Well, today, Mr. Potato comes to visit Peppa's class to talk about healthy eating and shows us a superhero, Super Potato. Super Potato! Yay! Maybe he stops criminals or protects the universe from genocidal maniacs. No. Even more amazing than that. He grabs a hat that flew off a carrot's head. Oh, my hat is blown off. Help me, Super Potato. Whoa. Of course, the children are incredibly impressed by this great feat of wonder. It's lucky Super Potato was there. Otherwise, the lady might have had to bend over and pick the hat up herself. Perish the thought. But lucky us. We and the kids are about to meet Super Potato in person. I mean, in Spud, Potato, whatever he is. By the power of vegetables, I am here! <laughs> Seriously, how stupid do they think these kids are? You think they don't recognize you're just Mr. Potato in underpants? I want the real Mr. Potato, but despite me getting to watch a talking potato dancing around in underpants, they still somehow make it boring. Remember, kids. Always eat your five a day. I'm very much on the side of encouraging kids to eat their five. Doctors now recommend you eat seven a day. Sorry, seven vegetables a day. But couldn't they have made it a little more interesting? Have you ever eaten a potato? Why, yes, Susie, I have. In fact, I like a healthy two servings of lamb with my potatoes and vegetables. They don't call me an abomination of nature for nothing, you know. After staying for one minute, Super Potato leaves the building. Super Potato has left the building. You know, I feel like you'd make a great receptionist. But Mr. Potato gets stuck in his car. How is he ever going to get out? Hooray! Super Potato has come to the rescue. Okay, I honestly didn't expect that. Well played, riders. Super Potato, the abomination of nature, to the rescue. And don't forget... Fruit and vegetables keep us alive. Always remember to eat your five. Seven! Always remember to eat your seven. And the fourth earth-shatteringly appalling Peppa Pig episode is...
Soft Play. The title is quite misleading though. It would be more apt to name this episode Death Fortress. Because any adult in the town who walks into this ballpark will be eternally stuck, sentenced to die of thirst due to the universal weight problem shared by the entire town. It's soft play, isn't it? No thanks. You're very welcome to stay if you want. See you later. You see, our buddy George has been invited to soft play. A dangerous place where children watch their parents waste away, laughing with glee. Fortunately, all the adults in the town already know how devious and ferocious this soft play is, and decline to even enter the ferocious fortress of doom. But it's no use. Eventually, the children lure their parents into the fortress, refusing to leave until they enter. Miss Rabbit is the first casualty, quickly absorbed into the fortress floor, while Mummy Pig is swallowed whole. Ah! I'm stuck! Help! Oh no, I'm stuck too! Help! Even Daddy Pig is quickly absorbed by the fortress. And yet he, he knew the truth this whole time. It's a trap! I'm going to go in there and get stuck. Seriously, it's like Daddy Pig read the 20 word script ahead of time. So he knows exactly what's going to happen before it does. They try to call the rescue service, but it turns out the rescue service in this town is made up of one person. One. What kind of bacon flavored doofus runs this town? So there's no one to rescue us. I'm afraid so, Daddy Pig. You see, in this very special episode of Peppa Pig, the entire adult population perished. Each one continuing to march into the fortress like lemmings. Too stupid to see the painfully obvious pattern of what was happening. Nah, I'm just joshing you. Pepper and Susie save the day. Oh, that tickles. <laughs> Everyone loves the soft play center. What? You just spent the entire episode showing us why the entire adult population hates the soft play pit. Why would you say that? Do you even hear what you're saying at this point? That's just so stupid. <sighs> We're moving on. And for the third earth-shatteringly appalling Peppa Pig episode, Parking Ticket. Here we finally learn the horrifying truth of Daddy Pig. He is secretly a criminal mastermind of the highest order. You see, Daddy Pig likes to buy concrete a lot. And now Daddy Pig needs yet more concrete for some reason. I'm buying a bag of concrete. Daddy Pig likes concrete. What's the deal with his concrete obsession anyway? Does he have a secret job as an assassin for the pig mafia? Or maybe he's Chinese. <laughs> Uh, no one? I mean, have you ever seen Shanghai? It's got like over 20,000 11 story. Never mind. Anyway, Daddy Pig leaves his car parked out right next to the uh, no badly drawn turtle sign. Fortunately, Daddy Pig doesn't have any of the most badly drawn turtles in the history of the universe. So he ventures into the concrete shop. But we later learn it's apparently meant to be a no parking sign. Who knew? How does that even remotely look like a car? It Anyway, so Miss Rabbit teaches Pepper and George how to make a painfully generous donation to the city council. I look for cars parked where they shouldn't be. When I find one, I give it a parking ticket. Like this. I just love how overjoyed she is to be doing the most thankless, hated job in the history of mankind. Hats off to you, Miss Rabbit. I think you and Judy Hopps are the only creatures in history to approach parking duty with a smile. Soon, evidence begins to pile up on Daddy Pig for his heinous crime. A photograph is delivered to him for his unforgivable, devious deed. And the police surround the house, demanding Daddy Pig come out with his hands up. You're not planning on leaving the country, are you? No. All right, you criminal mastermind. You're coming with us. Daddy Pig was sentenced to 18 months in the Great Grey Jail. Here, he learned the dark side of the law. And 18 months later, he even got another parking ticket. Nah, I'm just joshing you. He got a lesson in parking. What a rehabilitation-based criminal justice system they have. I'm actually impressed. Rather than crippling their finances and making things worse, they teach them lessons. Anyway, all this episode did was remind me how much I hate parking tickets and why I don't city park. And for number two, Chatterbox. So at this point, we're all so used to Peppa Pig yammering on endlessly about the most inane drivel ever conceived by intelligent species in the universe, that the writers decided we need an entire episode dedicated to the novelty of Peppa not talking. 
Except, well, she does, somehow more than usual. So we start the episode with our incredibly insightful and wise narrator stating the obvious to us for a solid minute. Such as, it's a bright and sunny day. It is a lovely sunny day. And did you know, Susie and Pepper are friends? Pepper and Susie are best friends. Oh, so that's why they're hugging. So in today's episode, Pepper begins by interrupting people and yammering about the most vapid, boring twaddle she can come up with about her day. I can easily stop talking if I want to. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You can't. I can. Oh my, what highly intellectually stimulating conversation the children are getting here. I feel like nails down a chalkboard is too kind a term. That's it. I'm never going to talk again. Yes, folks, you heard it correctly. Pepper has just stated she will never utter a single word again. Never again will our citizens be subject to the torture and horror of Pepper's wailing cat howl of a voice. How long shall this time of peace and joy last in our lands? <gasps> this is a silly game. Unfortunately, our time of peace and tranquility was only 16 seconds. Susie said I was a chatterbox and I could never be quiet. It's not even an insult, Pepper. It's like being told you speak a lot is a great offense against your character. So this mindless blathering goes on for an additional few minutes as Pepper tries her best not to talk, somehow resulting in her talking even more obnoxiously. You can't nod your head, that's cheating. And you can't blink. Okay, I'm actually with Pepper on this one. This is the stupidest game I've ever heard of. How does not talking have anything to do with your frequency of blinking? That's a bad habit to teach kids anyway. When Malcolm McDowell wasn't able to blink for several minutes in A Clockwork Orange, he almost damaged his corneas. I can't believe I need to say this, but blinking should be encouraged in children. What's the matter with Pepper? I don't know. We've been trying to figure that out for several years now. Ooh, look at me. I'm Susie Sheep. What is wrong with these kids? Eventually, they just disperse of coherent dialogue altogether and just meander along with random phrases and words of gibberish. Mickey Mackey Boo Ba Boo. Mickey Mackey Boo Ba Boo. The episode just goes on like this. Let's all do it. We can show my mummy. Ah, yes. Making a game out of doing absolutely nothing and not saying a word. Truly the height of YouTube entertainment quality. Boy, am I glad these videos still get millions of views from children. This is among the most unstructured, non-cohesive episodes of Peppa Pig I've ever seen. And I've watched over a hundred episodes episodes of these horrible wastes of five minutes. And now before we get to number one, let's go through our quick, honorable mentions. The Market. In this episode, the market has come to town. The market has come to Stop town. Stop that. Anyway, after Pepper does her best Godfather impression, mm, lovely. they come across Mrs. Cow, who, who is selling cheese. I've got a very smelly cheese here. Now, am I the only one assuming she's harvesting her own stock? I mean, I've got nothing against that. You go, girl. But uh, what do you call that situation when you're buying the milk straight from the cow herself? Highly efficient? Anyway, bicycles. This episode created a lot of controversy because there were no helmets when it aired. Parents were so outraged that the entire animation was reworked to include helmets. Copying and pasting helmets onto their one and two frames of animation. Anyway, on to number one. And I think the number one earth-shatteringly appalling Peppa Pig episode is... Rock pools. Oh boy. This episode follows the traditions of Mr. Skinny Legs in teaching children to play with wild, venomous, highly dangerous animals. Today on Peppa Pig, Pepper and her grandparents go to the beach, where Grandpa Pig shows Pepper and George that it's okay to blindly stick your hand into random rock pools. And of course, Grandpa Pig gets pinched by a crab. It's a crab! Ah! Well, then why'd you stick your hand in there, you twit? Well, you see, according to Grandpa... And in every rock pool, there's something special. You heard him, kids. According to Grandpa Pig, make sure to stick your hands into every random rock pool you see. Something good might happen. And obviously I'm being sarcastic. Kids or adults shouldn't do that. 
What surprise is waiting in this pool? I don't know, a murderous octopus that paralyzes with its sting? Maybe a lionfish with venomous spines all over its fins. Apparently you're telling the kids to just stick their hands right in to find out. So for the next quarter of the episode, Pepper and George just pretend to be crabs. Hello, I like money. No, no, not Mr. Krabs, just normal crab. That one's too interesting. We're naughty crabs. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And well, it just keeps going like that for a while. Until finally, Pepper discovers a rock pool with a shell in it. However, that shell belongs to a cone snail. According to National Geographic, a carnivorous and extremely venomous snail that can kill a human with its poison harpoon. And currently, we have no anti-venom. Now, maybe it's just me, but shouldn't we be teaching the kids not to pick up the lethal sea creatures? I mean, I'm just spitballing here, but it feels like this is like teaching the kids that spiders won't hurt you, when some of them most certainly can. Just wait until our next episode, where Pepper plays with a deadly box jellyfish, known to paralyze and kill its prey in minutes. Honestly, Pepper, are you trying to increase our planet's yearly rates of emergency room visits? Considering this is the third time that this show has encouraged kids to play with deadly animals, I think we can safely call this an earth-shatteringly appalling Peppa Pig episode. I love rock pools. <laughs> Honestly, quick confession from me, I love doing these pepper lists. So if you've got any other episodes you'd like me to look at, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.